And I'm able to praise your man. That's right. Praise right. the Lord. Praise the Son. Right. Amen. 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 In the name of
once I was blind. But now I can. He says, where, where is the proof? He said, I can see you.
that Jesus was who he said he was. And we're going to stick with the same thing and the same message. There is a man by the name but we think the Lord God and the Son, Jesus Christ in the right name of Jesus. Thank God for each and every one of you, my wife, the pastor, Bishop Philip, and everyone in the household of faith. But we got to get into the message. There was a man by the name of Simeon
And in God, you hear what he said? He said in verse number 20, 28, Then took he him up in his arm. And he blessed not the baby, he blessed God. Why did he bless God? Because my eyes have now seen the evidence. Have seen that he will see the salvation. And he also blessed the parent. And he said, What? Well, now, Lord, now let him, thy servant, depart in peace. Why? Because I've got the evidence. My eyes have seen what God has told me through the Holy Ghost. It talks about the Holy Ghost here, but the Holy Ghost we have now is not the Holy Ghost. God spoke to him directly. I told him. And as he went through, he said, But my eyes have seen thy salvation. What else does it say? Which thou hast prepared before the face of all the people. A light to enlighten who? No, me. Me. I was a Gentile. I am a Gentile. He's going to bring the light onto the Gentile. That's what he's going to do. The Lord God is going to bring salvation to the Gentile. Jews by birth. But we are Jews by adoption. And his eyes saw him. And he departed. You heard no more about sin. But well, let me just say this. The proof lives on. That was the first coming of Jesus. But let me point you out to another second coming of Jesus that he's told us about in his word is evident. The same way they were looking for the evidence for the first coming, we ought to be looking for the second evidence to come when the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. So are you prepared for the second coming of the Lord? He has already come once. He's coming again. For a prepared set of people. Those who are called by his name. Those who have the evidence and the proof. Without the spirit of God, you're none of his. Without the Holy Ghost, you're not going back with him. In Acts chapter 1, when Jesus was about to be taken up, we see that in Acts chapter 1, round about verse number 9 to 11. And Jesus went up to the mountain and he's about to be taken up. And as he's taken up, they started looking up for are you looking up for it? Let me say this. Every one of us. The Bible said, look up for your redemption. Draw it now. When you least expect it. When men say peace and safety, they saw the destruction is going to come. But we have got the Prince of Peace. We can say, Lord, the evidence does not just exist. The evidence lives within us. I am living proof of the Holy Ghost. I am living proof that it can be done. We have the Holy Ghost. Now, if the case comes to trial and the district attorney finds out that you have some evidence and you did not disclose it, then you could end up in jail for withholding Is there anyone who has a secret service holy ghost? Is there anyone who just take the holy ghost and just lock it up? Not gonna tell anybody that they have the evidence. Let me say this to you who won't speak for the Lord. You're gonna open your mouth one day and just like Peter 
when Jesus was being crucified, taken away to be crucified, they're going to say to you, you are one of them because your very speech give you away. Let me say this, if you are a child of God, your speech is going to give you away. Guess what? That's the evidence. If you can't speak righteousness, you've got to ask yourself, do I have the evidence? Do I have the Holy Ghost? The Bible says that everything that has prayed, praise the Lord. But some of us don't praise the Lord. Do you have the evidence? Do you have the evidence? Do you really have the Holy Ghost? Do you really have the Spirit of God living on the inside? Because you know what? Jeremiah said, when I want to speak, he said, it be like fire shut up in your bones. You have fire shut up in your bones. You can't sit still. When you have fire shut up in your bones, you got to still see. Tell somebody about Jesus. Tell somebody that Jesus saved. Tell somebody that you were a wretched sinner. Don't be ashamed to tell them that you were a sinner. One songwriter picked it up. He says, I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore. He said, I was buried deep. I stayed with him. Sinking to rise up. Of the sea. Amen. You're a sinner. The Lord hears your prayer. Yes, yes, yes. It says, He heard my despairing cry. And from the water, He lifted me through the evidence. And guess what? Look at me. Now, save a man. Save a man. Look around, see that we are so compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let me say this. I don't know if any of you were born sin like John the Baptist, but I was not born sin. I was wretched. I was undone until Jesus came into my life. And a bald headed preacher man called me up and said, Young man, it's high time you got saved. The thing I needed the most, I was lacking, but I did not know I was missing it until now I've got it. You see, sometimes you don't know what you're missing until you get it. Let me ask all of you, all of you who have a car, would you trade your car, you know, and start riding a bicycle? Now we know the value of a car. Now we know what a car will do for us. Let me say this, when we didn't have the Holy Ghost, we didn't know whether we were coming or going. The enemy would kick us around, he would do all kinds of things with us, and we would go wherever he said. But now that I have the Holy Ghost, the Bible said, he shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is coming. And I'm going to have some proof. If there is no proof in your life as a believer, ask yourself, do I have the evidence. Do I have the Holy Ghost? Are you looking for the coming of the Lord? How long will you wait? How long will you look? Because the Bible says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who have the evidence and are alive and have lived it out to the proof, yes. Yes. we're going to be caught up. Yes. And when we get caught up, the evidence, yeah. follow me here, which is the Holy Ghost. Yes. If the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus, that's Romans 8, chapter 11, uh -huh. raised up Jesus from the dead. If it dwells in you, you have the Holy Ghost. You have the Holy Ghost. When was the last time you feel a creeping in your body? The baby cried out. When was the last time when you wanted to do something that was wrong? The Holy Ghost said you can't do it. When was the last time that you thought about going back 
back into the world and the Holy Ghost said, you can't do that. Not only do you have the Holy Ghost, but you have talked about it so much. You have testified about so much. You have testified that God brought you to. How can you go back and turn your back on the Lord now? And the devil will tell you. Let me say this to you. The devil will always take you back. Amen. The devil will always take you back. He will entice you. He will sweet talk you. He will do as he did. Jesus took him up to the ice cream and showed him all the kingdoms. All this I will give to you. All you have to do is just bow down. All you have to do is deny the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose the What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You have the evidence. Hold on to it. You keep it. Because the Lord is coming back. God promised to send him back and if God said it, let's believe it. Simeon, when the Lord to the Holy Ghost promised him that he's going to see, he believed. Guess what? Back again. He said, no man know the day, nor the hour. In Matthew chapter 24, find that quickly. Matthew chapter 24, verse 42. Unsaved, 
you pray that the Lord open their understanding. Because we at one point in time were unsaved. And somebody prayed for me. Had me on their mind. Somebody prayed for you. Even when you did not know it, that mother was praying for you, that pastor was praying for you, that brother was praying for you, somebody was praying for you. And when you came and got the Holy Ghost, somebody rejoiced. But guess what? Not only somebody rejoiced, the Bible said, heaven rejoices. Who shall separate you from the love of Christ? So because you go through hard times, you're going to give up? Have you been through hard times? Anybody here have some trials and some troubles? I heard Sister Trisha sing the song, Though the storm keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. But guess what? Still that hope that lies within me is reassured. To the utmost, Jesus said, Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it well. We were abundantly. We didn't have any life until Jesus came into our life. Who shall separate me? Tribulation. Tribulation. Distress. Distress. Persecution. Persecution. Famine. Sometimes we have no food and we are so stressed. You see, the plan of the enemy is to get you stressed out. Yes. Then he gets you oppressed. Uh -huh. Then he gets you depressed. Uh -huh. And then he gets you possessed. Uh -huh. Come on, say that. You see, once he possesses you, the only person can deliver you is the Lord. Amen. He will deliver you from the snares of the devil. When we get caught in the devil's trap, all we have to do, like what Peter. Shall tribulation, or nakedness, nakedness or pearl, pearl, or sword. sword. If we have to die, let us die in the Lord. If we have to die, let's die for the Lord. Blessed are the dead. You do what? That die in the Lord. Don't die in your sin. Amen. Do not die in your sin. You to go to hell. And then to the lake of fire. Don't die in your sin. While the blood is running warm in your veins, while you're in the sound of my voice, today if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Peril was. As is it written. As is it written. For the Lord's sake, we are what? We are killed all the day long. That's why they talk about you with their mouth. Sometimes they will kill you with their mouth. They will kill you with their action. All the day long, we are killed. What does other say? We are counted. Yeah. Sheep, sheep. You know, when a sheep, sometimes they call them dumb sheep. Amen. When you take a sheep and start leading to the slaughter, he has no idea. He just walks there. He just going there. You know what they say about Jesus in Isaiah 53? And as a sheep before it's here. We're led to the slaughter. What else does it say? Nay, oh, this is the part. Nay. No, no, no. In all these things, we are more than conqueror. Guess what? Victory is ours. It that shall be ours. Victory is ours. We sing the song say, victory, victory shall be mine. No, victory is mine. I will let the Lord fight my battle. The choir sings on sometime. Don't wait till 
the battle is over. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to shout now. We're not going to wait until the battle is over. We are going to shout now. When they walked around the wall of Jericho, they did not see it. The first time, the second time, after seven times, six times for six days, on the seventh day. They walked around that wall six times. Nothing happened. Why? But the God said on the seventh time, on the seventh day, when you walk and march around, I want you to do this one thing. Just shout. When we were in the church in Sunday school, he used to sing the, wall, the song Around the walls of Jericho, around the walls of Jericho, around the walls of Jericho, the army went seven times without to stop, seven times without to stop, seven times without to stop, the army went. When the people made a movie, and at that time, exactly, all the children would say, made a shout! As kids, it said the wall came down and we asked him, into Jericho right now. That's what. All you have to do, march up. Come on. You have a problem? March up on your house seven times. Just march up on your house seven times. Joseph thought Mary was a 
and according to the law, he had to put her away. So as not to embarrass her, the Bible said he would put her away privately. It means privately. Let's not make a big scandal out of this. I love you, Mary, but let me just, let me just do this quietly. But the angel of the Lord came to him in a dream and gave him some evidence. Gave him some evidence. And when he gave him the evidence, then he lived out the proof of the evidence. Be not afraid to take Mary for your wife. Because that So the Bible says, let's not give up hope. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquering through them. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51, as we write. <laughs> yes, I'm right about there. Hold on. Chapter 15, verse 51. In case you don't understand or be confused, we are no different from them back then. What it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. Hold on. If it was as plain as day, it wouldn't be a mystery. But I'm going to show you a mystery. Guess what? Sleep. Some of us are going to sleep. Some of us have to go by the grave. But let me say this to you. Don't go to the grave in your sins. Don't go to the grave without salvation. Don't go to the grave without the Holy Ghost. Behold. I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but guess what? But we shall all be in the twinkle of an eye. Guess what? How is this going to happen? At the last trump. Are you listening for the trump? Are you listening for the trump? We sing a song back home that says, I am so glad I've got salvation in time. I am so glad I've got salvation in time. I am so glad. Oh my Lord, oh my Lord, what shall I do? It says, hush, hush, somebody's calling my name. Hush, hush, somebody's calling my name. Hush, hush, somebody's calling my name. Oh my Lord, oh my Lord, what shall I Is somebody calling your name? Read what it says. Hold on, no. I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. At the last trump, are we listening for the trump of God? The trump is going to sound and the dead in Christ are going to rise. At the last trump, the trump is going to sound. The trump has a distinction. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you will hear the trump and don't know what it means. But the Holy Ghost will let you know that's the trump. That's the trump. That's the trump. And you can't be ready waiting. Sister Mavis, when you went to pick up your daughter this morning, was she ready? Huh. She said she was going to church, right? And she was ready, right? You didn't have to sit in the car and pom, 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 pom. She was ready to go to church. We have to be ready. When the trump sound, we gotta be ready. We have got to listen for that trump sound. When that trump sound, then you gotta be ready. You gotta say, here I am, Lord. Take me. Take me, Lord. I am ready. Because of me. Go ahead. And the trump shall sound, and the dead 
shall be raised. Oh, you see this corruption? Mm. Right now, this corruption shall put on incorruption. And if I may just say like some people say, guess what? You ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. And as Minister Why would I often say, our future looks bright. Grace incorruptible, and we shall what? We shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruptible. And this mortal must put on what? Immortality. You see what? Guess what? When we have put on immortality, nothing that this world can do can hurt us. But we don't have to wait until then. When you believe and have the evidence and live out the evidence and the proof in your life, nothing this world can do to you will hurt you. Yes, they may hurt the body, but they can't hurt the soul. Anchored in the Lord, rooted and grounded and anchored in the Lord, there is nothing that he can do. For when this corruption shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to back the saying that is written, Oh, death! Death is swallowed up in victory! Guess what? Jesus has already given us victory! He rose from the dead, and he said, Our power in heaven and on earth is given. first coming was glorious, but the second coming is going to be even more glorious. It's the second coming of the Lord that's important. Yes, he came and he died. He bled and he died to buy my pardon. My Savior lived. One day he's coming back. One day he's coming back. A glorious day. Don't let that one catch you unaware. Don't let the Lord come back and catch you and you are not prepared. Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? No grave could hold his body down. And guess what? No grave is going to hold our body down. Because when he comes back and say, come my people, we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air. The sin of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us. Did he say we are going to get the victory? He has given us the victory. We have the victory. Yeah. All we have to do is walk in the victory. Yeah. Guess what? When Gideon went down to, to with 300 men, it wasn't their strength. It was the strength of the Lord. All they had to do was... When Israel came out of bondage, they didn't have to do anything. Just claim Canaan. God had already given them the victory. The Bible said, what, wherever your foot has brought, has trotted, that I have given you. If you got the evidence, yes. show the proof. Show the proof. The Holy Ghost is alive and well. Yes, and we have to live accordingly to the utmost. Jesus said, yes. to the utmost. Jesus said, yes, if you have not surrendered your life to the Lord, if you have not repented of your sins, if you have never been baptized in the name of Jesus, come to Jesus right now. Victory will be yours. Don't wait till the battle is over. Shout now. But do not go in the battle with the devil without the Holy Ghost. Don't think you can go toe to toe with the devil. And you. Because when he sees you, he sees Jesus. And when he sees Jesus, he sees God. What do you when the devil look at you can't find Jesus in your life? See, the devil is no 
of idiot in you. When the anointing power of the Holy Ghost is on you, on. when he sees you, he sees Jesus. Yes. And when you look beyond Jesus, he's looking at God. Not that he's not going to mess with you, but he will not prevail. You know what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16? He said, the gates of hell shall not prevail. Doesn't mean it's not going to try, but it will not prevail against it. Upon this rock, upon this truth, upon this gospel, upon this belief that Jesus is the son of the living God, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. We all bless you and keep you in Thank Jesus' you, name. Thank God for the 